Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, my name is Michael, the Shy City Hacker. Today's video is going to be a complete breakdown on J plugs. What are they? How do you use them? What are some of the different styles that they make? Uh, some colors that you may want to have in your collection. So we're going to jump straight into this video and talk about J plugs. They are by far my most favorite lure to run for kings, for big kings, for staging kings, uh, for the fall kings. You cannot go wrong with J plugs. Why are J-plugs so effective? Well, I think the answer to that is twofold. Uh, firstly, one is their action. Um, I have one here just to kind of show you. Uh, the way that, that they are designed here, they have a real wide wobble. Real wide wobble. On top of the wobble, they also dart. So they've got a wobble and a dart action that happens when it's being pulled in the water here. And that action, along with the rattle, uh, really drives those kings crazy. You can run them as early in the season as you want, uh, but they really come into the zone where you where you definitely want to have one or two out in your spread in what I would say is late summer going into the fall period. So like right now, for instance, it's, it's, it's August here uh, in 2023. This is the time period where we start to get these staging kings to start to set up and get in preparation for that fall run. This really comes into its own in August, in through September, into October for those last remaining kings here. Just a super effective because of the wobble, the darting action, and the rattling. It drives and annoys those big kings to strike out of, of uh, aggression, to strike out of irritation. That's really what you're trying to get out of these fish because they've stopped actively feeding. I will tell you this, that there's no greater strike and more violent strike from a king than comes on the J plug. So if you don't have any, uh, it would behoove you to at least pick one up to add to your collection. I will link to some down below in the description for you to check out. Now let's talk about the variety. There's different kinds of styles here. Uh, right now I have a bunch of the silver horde, um, you know, the original J plugs, they really stopped making them, so they're really hard to come by at this point. So when you find some, it's best to just jump on them and grab them when you can. Uh, but what I have here is a variety of Silver Horde J plugs. And this is one right here that, um, let me grab one that already is disconnected. I can show you guys. So when you get this style of J plug here, it's just the body, it's got the hole in here, and it comes with the hook harness. And it's got a beaded swivel chain here. And the way you're gonna run this is from the bottom of the bait, you'll take the hook harness, bead swivel, run it down in there to the top, and then you will have the body just like that. Now it's super important on this style of J-plug here, this one where the harness goes through the body of the bait, you have to hook this up, tie it directly to your line, your leader line. Do not use a snap swivel, you don't want to use swivels, swivels with these at all. It'll kill the action. You don't want to use snaps with these simply because th this was designed so that when the fish strikes and you have it hooked directly to your line, the body slides up the line so that the fish is simply hooked here and it can't use the body of the, and the weight of the J plug here to leverage it to throw the hooks out of its mouth. So it's meant to slide up and down your line when you're fighting that fish and stay out of the way. Um, Secondly, if you do happen to break off, these float and they will float back up to the surface. So you have a chance to recover your, your bait, which are hard to come by and they aren't cheap. Uh, it gives you a chance to recover these guys as well. So remember with this style of J-plug, run it through the bottom. When you get to the top, tie directly to your leader line. That is how you're gonna wanna fish this style of J-plug. The other ones that we have here are going to be your ace high silver hordes. Now these guys, are different in that the harness is connected to the body already. It's it's all connected there. Uh, there's a there's a big O-ring at the top. With this style of plug, you can actually just use a, a snap on there and you're good to go. You don't have to tie it directly. You can use a snap if you wanted to uh, because the body isn't sliding anywhere. It's it's all affixed, so it's not going anywhere. Those are the two main styles of plugs that you're gonna encounter out there. Now, you have two different sizes of plugs. Again, going back to the first one here, this is the big boy, the size five. Uh, it's a big body, big bait presentation. It's a really big wobble. The other style that we have here 
is going to be your size fours. These guys are a little bit smaller, a little bit more finesse is what I would say. When you take them side by side, you can actually see the difference. It's quite different for the size four and size five. Now, what I've noticed is that there are times where they may want one size more than the other. Last year, in fact, during the staging king process, I was running the big guys. I couldn't get a sniff on them. I downsized and I was getting crushed on the smaller ones. This year, we'll wait to see what happens. It could be the same thing or it could be they just want the big ones or it could be they don't even care. They'll take whatever you throw in front of them. That's yet to, to be seen yet. Um, but the point is, is that you have two different sizes. Again, size four and the size fives. It's always good to have uh, a couple in your box uh, because again, they could be very picky and want one over the other. And let me just say that they do have other sizes out there, even smaller ones, Like, but for, for our purposes, when it comes to staging kings, kings in general, I really just stick with the fours and the fives. You want a bigger size profile um, and at least the size four gives you just a smaller little option there. So just focus on the fours and the fives. Next, let's talk about color selection here because there are some colors that tend to just, for me, work better, have historically been better options for anglers across Lake Michigan. So let's talk about those now. One that I've been showing you right here is Lucky Charms. It's magically delicious and it's magically good for kings. All right, cheesy joke, I know. But truth be told, Lucky Charms is a great one. You've got chartreuse, you've got green, it's got a glow body. I, I mean, need I say more? We also have the Chrome Lucky Charms. So it's got a chrome body with the chartreuse and the green on top of it. Another good one. I really like this guy here when uh, the sun is out. When you're, you know, late morning, you're fishing midday, you're fishing afternoon. If, just if the sun is out still, that chrome gives that real bright flash. They see the chartreuse and the green. I tend to run that one in that, that time period. When it comes to this Lucky Charms, the Glow Lucky Charms, well, I like it in low light situations. You can glow it up a little bit and kind of go from there. You can easily still fish it throughout the day when the sun is out, uh, but I would generally kind of switch to the chrome guy. I held this one up already. You've seen this guy. This is the uh, Wonder Bread Mother of Pearl, I believe is the, the color of it, but you can see here, it, this thing's got UV, it's super bright. You've got the Wonder Bread coloring on top of it. Uh, I mean, again, very, very good looking plug that I would run in that time period where you have a lot of sun out or the sun is already out kind of a situation here. When it comes to colors, you can't go wrong with splatter backs on your J plugs. There's a variety of splatter backs. You've got uh, black splatter back, you've got green splatter back. In fact, this is a, a green one right here. Um, it's got a little bit of a glow belly on it as well. Uh, it's an ace high version as well. So all of this is a fixed here. Um, splatter back. So if, you, if you're looking for J plugs and you come across some that have splatter back in the name, those are generally good ones to have. Again, the colors you're looking for, typically a green or a black splatter back, uh, possibly a blue in there as well. But splatter backs are always a good option to have in your J plug box. Another one we need to talk about here is Mother of Pearl. This has a little bit of Wonder Bread on here. When you hear Mother of Pearl, it's basically like a pearl white color body. Those, any kind of Mother of Pearl, generally speaking, is a good one to have in your J-plug box. Uh, this is a kind of an old school one. This is actually a Lure Jensen. Lure Jensen originally made the J-plugs here. And uh, you can see the name here, in fact, J-plug. Hopefully you can see it right there. Um, yeah, so I'm try I, I don't fish it much because I don't want to lose it, but this is a good one. Uh, and I probably need to probably risk it for the biscuit for the big boys. But Mother of Pearl is a good one. Pinky is another good one. Um, and uh, so if you find those, snatch those guys up. Now, this next J-plug I'm about to show you here looks so basic, probably looks so boring. But man, when I tell you it is so good, straight chrome. That's it. Nothing else about it. It's literally all chrome rattles. This is a size four. I also have in the size five, the big boy. This thing last year smoked all of my kings. They didn't want the big guys. They wanted this little one, the smaller one rather, in chrome. It, they just whacked it. And I think it just had to deal with the fact that it's annoying on all fronts. It's wobbles, beads are loud in here, and the chrome flashing in their face. It, it was probably just a holy, the holy trinity of annoyance for these kings. Don't underestimate and make sure you add the chrome, straight chrome J-plug to your uh, J-plug box. And one other one that I would highly recommend having is called Bone. It is just as boring as the chrome one, only it is 
a white off-white uh, colored glow J plug. I had one around and I seem to have misplaced it, which is freaking me out because that's a really, really good one to have. But if you find a bone colored J plug, you're welcome. That's a good one right there. Now to wrap this all up, let's talk about how do you run these J plugs? Well, for me, typically I'm running them back at least 30 feet off of my weight. Or if you're in a boat, you can run them 30 feet off of your rigger. I find 30 to be a good sweet spot. Remember that they have a little bit of a dive to them somewhere in that five foot or so range, maybe five at best seven feet. So wherever you decide to put your torpedo weight or your rigger, you have to account for another at least five feet of depth for where this is gonna be sitting in the water column there. And when I'm fishing J plugs, I utilize a stacking technique where I'm setting up the flasher fly tight to the ball and I'm running that J plug just above and behind it within a five to seven foot radius if you can picture that in your mind, I want the uh, J plug trailing behind the flasher fly just above it a little bit. And I found that to be super, super effective. And uh, one, the flasher fly are drawing in those fish. And, and even though those fish may not be actively feeding, they break off of the flasher fly and they immediately see that J plug there that irritates them into biting. Super good way to run your J plugs. You can run them uh, as well, just off of a board or by themselves, it'll still catch fish, but when you combine it with a flasher fly stacking them, uh, I just find that I have much more success, more uh, uh, bite opportunities, and uh, it's just effective. And that is a crash course on J plugs, why you should have them, the differences between some styles, uh, some color options to consider and adding into your J plug box, as well as how I typically run them. If you wanna learn more, make sure you check out the link down below, a full course there for you on how to utilize them in the spreads and when I'm using them for staging kings as well as for the fall kings, which that is, is pinnacle J-plug fishing when it's the fall run. So if you wanna learn more about the fall run, check out the link down below to my e-course on fishing for fall kings. There's a lot of information there and a port by port breakdown where I typically find most of the kings congregating at that you can focus your efforts on when you're out here trolling for kings this fall. Hopefully you guys found the video useful. If you did, throw the thumbs up, like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video.